What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So the finals for the 2024 Flex Pro Weekend in Milan, Italy just wrapped up. And I'm not really surprised with the result here. So Beirut's Tabani was able to defeat Nathan Diasha and win this show. Nathan wound up in second. Emir Omarajic ended up in third. So pretty much, well, exactly as we predicted at prejudging. Then Anthony Gell in fourth. And Justin Muziol in fifth. So I've got some different pictures and some different video for you guys in this wrap up because like I said, I wasn't super impressed with the live stream quality, the way that the lighting looked. They were like very oversaturated, very washed out. The lighting wasn't good, but I think also whatever the settings on the camera were, that that brightness and the white balance kind of threw off these guys' physique. So I got some video from people in the crowd. I got some HD pictures. But I think it really comes down to two things with Beirut's Tabani winning this show. I think the biggest thing is conditioning. I think he outconditioned Nathan here. But I think the other thing is shape. If you look at Nathan, he doesn't have a bad shape. He doesn't have a bad flow to his physique. But he, he does have kind of an odd midsection. It's a little bit like almost too long. And I think that in this video from a fan in the crowd, you can kind of see that kind of weird, his obliques kind of stick out a little bit, just just not the most pleasing shape. And that's one big thing that Beirut has. And like I said, I think that's the reason why a lot of people wanted Beirut to win last week against William Bonac is because Beirut is so aesthetically pleasing. He's got such a nice physique just to look at compared to Bonac who's a little bit more gnarly. He's a little bit blockier, more of a rugged look to his physique than an aesthetic one. But I do think in this case, this was a well-deserved victory for Beirut's Tabani, and hopefully we do get to see him on the Olympia stage this year. I know he's had problems with this for like the past several years now, but he looked fantastic here. I think he did outclass Nathan Diasha. I mentioned in that pre-judging video that I felt that Nathan's legs, specifically his quads and specifically in the front shots, his legs looked a lot bigger than Beirut's, specifically his quads. And I think that did really kind of expose the main weak point that Beirut's has, which is kind of that size discrepancy between his upper and lower body that I talked about even before the M Pro Classic. So it kind of looked like Nathan had a chance there because he was kind of exposing Beirut's, I think, biggest weakness. But then when you look at some of these HD pictures, if you look at the sides and you look at the back, Beirut's legs didn't look undersized because he was in such good shape. When you look at his legs from the side, you see those crazy splits. You see the striated glutes. You see the hamstrings. And I think that's where he got Nathan with this crazy level of conditioning. You look at the back shot. Again, the striated glutes, the separated hamstrings. And I think that's where he came out on top because, you know, the front poses are just a couple of poses. So even if Nathan had better legs in the front, you know, Nathan had that imbalance with the bicep injury. Upper body wise, I prefer Beirut's. Um, but from the back and the sides, Beirut's legs look just fine because he comes in such crazy condition. And you can see all that detail in his leg from the sides and from the back. Then if you look at the upper body, I would look at this most muscular pose, this HD picture of the most muscular pose. Yes, Nathan has you know bigger teardrops. His quads look more developed, maybe even better separation in the quads. But look at the upper body. That's where Beirut's kind of even overcompensates. Look at the deep striations in Beirut's chest in this front uh, most muscular pose. Look at the size of his delt. So the conditioning that he's in plus the fullness. Look how full and round his delts are. Deep striations in his pecs, deeper, much deeper than Nathan's. And then if you look in the abs in this pose, much deeper separated abs in the most muscular than Nathan. Really, this most muscular is kind of a pretty stunning pose for Beirut's. And then I would say also, if you look at the front double bicep pose, you look at Nathan's bicep, the bicep closest to Beirut's, you can see kind of the lasting impact of that injury, an imbalance from arm to arm. And again, if you look at Nathan's midsection, while he doesn't have a gut issue and he doesn't have you know a bad midsection, you can see towards the bottom of his midsection, those obliques there, they kind of stick out and create kind of a weird, you know, they kind of interrupt the taper. You look at where the lats go into the midsection. At first, it tapers down. His lats taper down into the midsection, but then the obliques kind of flare back out. 
But if you look at Beirut's, the lats taper down into the midsection and it just continues to go down into the leg. So I feel like that kind of throws off Nathan's aesthetics. But then again, look at the quads, and I think that's the biggest kind of point that Nathan exposes with Beirut's. Even in this front double bicep pose, which almost every other aspect of the body, I think Beirut's looks better. Those legs, Nathan really exposes them. So you got to give Nathan credit for what he was able to put together here. Now, I think you also got to give his coach credit, Boss of Outlaw, Stefan, because Nathan, in some of those pictures that we saw in the week leading up to the show, he really didn't look that conditioned. And he looked significantly more conditioned on stage than he looked in any of those pictures or videos that we saw. And I think that's a testament to his coach. So he did look good here, but I still think it was really, at the end of the day, conditioning, if you had to narrow it down to one thing, I think conditioning is what gave this win to Beirut's. Yes, like I said, the aesthetics, the flow, but I think conditioning is what really gave Beirut's the edge here. And I was surprised, actually, when I looked at the scorecards to see that it wasn't as close as I think a lot of people thought it was. Beirut's won unanimously with a score of three at prejudging, a score of three at finals, and Nathan with a score of six at prejudging, a score of six at finals. So this was a three-point decision, not two, not one. Three points at prejudging, three points at finals, six points separating their total score of 6-12. to 12. Um, So it was a pretty decisive victory on Beirut's behalf. And just in case you guys were curious, it was closer between Bonac and Beirut's. Bonac did not win unanimously the Impro Classic. He had four at prejudging, four at finals, and Beirut's had five at prejudging, five at finals. So it was a one-point decision at prejudging, one-point decision at finals, two-point decision overall. So two points between Bonac and uh, Beirut's, and a final score of six points between Beirut's and Nathan. So Beirut's kind of, this was, this actually really was a good redemption for Beirut's. Because Bonac was also working with Stefan, Boss of Outlaw. So one of Boss of Outlaw's guys beat Beirut's last time. Now Beirut's beat one of Boss of Outlaw's guys this time. But like I said, I think the big thing for me is I really hope that Beirut's is able to get his visa to go to the Olympia. I really think he belongs there. This is the type of conditioning you want to see on the Olympia stage. This is the type of physique that belongs up there. And I really hope to see him there. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys, appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram, at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.